Hello. We're going to do a quick little experiment here, analyzing the free fall motion of a ball that's thrown up into the air. We're going to collect video of the motion and then analyze the video using a computer program, see what sort of information we can glean from the experiment. So to begin with, I need to use this uh, one meter stick to hold it up in the field of view so we know what one meter stick is. We'll need that when we analyze the video. And I have a rubber ball which I can throw up in the air, so I'm going to do that right now. We'll collect the motion of the ball on video, analyze it a little bit later. Here's the motion. Now it's time to collect data for the video that we just collected. So I have imported the movie into my video analysis program, and I'm going to begin by first calibrating to indicate what one meter is on this little video screen. So what I'm going to do is fast forward the video to a frame where the meter stick shows up, which is right about here. And then I'm going to grab this tool and I'm going to say from the, this point at the top of the meter stick down to this point at the bottom of the meter stick is one meter. And this has got to be perfect or it's going to, just, it's going to uh, have effect upon all my data. So I think I did a pretty good job there. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to indicate the origin point. And so what I'm going to do is fast forward the video to the point where the ball just leaves the hand. And that looks like it's going to be right about there. And I'm going to call that the origin location, the point where x is 0 and y is 0. And now what I'm going to begin to do is click on my ball. I'm going to choose the middle of the ball in each frame and I'm going to click on it. I want to do as good a job as I can. I'm not really worrying about the X middle, the horizontal middle of the ball. I'm mainly worried about the vertical middle of the ball. It looks like I've hit the peak and the ball is moving back down. I want to be as accurate as I can any sort of missing the middle by just a little bit is going to introduce error into my results. Now I'm noticing the ball is going faster right now and there's a little bit of a motion blur and so I know that this for sure is going to give me um, some error. Here's my last point and the ball gets caught. And so I'm now collected information data for my video and it comes time to analyze that data. Now I'm going to make an effort to analyze the data that was collected from the frame-by-frame -frame analysis of the video. And so what I have in my software program is I have a plot of the Y velocity, those are the blue triangles and the values over here on the left vertical axis, as a function of time. And I also have as the red circles um, a plot of the Y position as a function of time. And the values for Y position are listed on the right side of the vertical axis. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to begin by analyzing those blue triangles, the, the Y velocity, because it looks like a pretty straight line. So in the software program, one of the options is to run a linear regression of those points. So I'll perform the linear fit. And here's the result of the linear fit. The thing I'm really interested in is the slope, because the slope of a velocity time graph gives me the acceleration. And the slope is negative 10.281. Uh, I notice um, one thing here when I look at my linear regression. I notice the first three or four points really skew from the line, and the last few points also seem to skew from the line. So one thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to redo this linear regression just to see if I can get more appropriate results. So I'm going to select, um, let's just say, these points right here, and I run my linear regression on the y velocity values, and what I end up getting is a slope that's about 10, negative 10.0 meters per second per second. So um, that's a pretty good estimate of what my acceleration of the free-falling ball is as it's uh, moving upwards and downwards to the air. And now I'm going to begin to focus some more attention upon the connection between the Y positions, those are the red circles, and the Y velocity. Because I notice this point right here, uh, it's right about 33.3 seconds. I notice that that velocity is about zero. I'm going to click on that point, and I notice the vertical position is about at its highest point. Not exactly the highest point, but very close to the highest point. So the next thing that I am going to make a note of 
is that when the ball is at its highest position, the y velocity is right about 0 meters per second. Now I'm going to go back three points or so from there. I'm going to go to this point, and I'm going to click on this point where the y position is about 0 0.5160, and the y velocity is 1.150 meters per second. I'm going to try to find another point at about the same height, a height of about 0.52-ish meters per meters above the ground. That would be this point. It's at a height of about 0.5127 meters above the ground, and the velocity is a negative 1.077 meters per second. Now I'm going to go back to this point and click on it again and, and make a note that at that same height after the peak, the velocity was negative 0.1077. So I click on this and the velocity is about positive 1.15. So we're talking about positive 1.1 and over here about positive 1 point, negative 1.1. And so the, the third point that I get from this little analysis of the video is when the ball is at the same height, either before or after the peak, the y velocities are about the same value. I'm just going to do it one more time just to illustrate that point because I notice um, right here, all, all, almost right here and right here, uh, we are at about the same height. It's a little bit different, but close enough for government work. So the y velocity is about 2.1 meters per second. And we come over here and click on this. And the y velocity is about negative 2.3 meters per second. Not exactly the same because they're not exactly the same height. But again, close enough for government work. We observe this third point that when the ball is at the same height either before or after the peak, the y velocities are about the same. At least their magnitude is. The only difference between them is that one is positive on the way upward and negative on the way downwards. So here's three big points from this video that the acceleration is about negative 9.8 meters per second per second, that when it, the ball is at its highest point, the y velocity is about zero, and then the third point is that uh, at the same height of the ball, either before or after the peak, the y velocity has about the same magnitude. The only difference between them is one is positive before the peak and negative after the peak. Thanks for listening.